Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Design That. It's been quite a while, but I've been really, really busy. I'm in my new house and this is the spare bedroom and this is gonna be my print slash design room. And this video is gonna show you how I made my screen print vacuum table. So you can see it just behind me here, just a little bit. This has been a little project of mine for about three, four months, it feels like an absolute lifetime. The reason why it took so long is because I could only really do it at the weekends. And a few bits and pieces I ordered from China and it ended up taking like nearly four weeks to arrive, so that kind of delayed things. But anyway, let's show you how exactly I did it. So to start off with, we drew the lines and I spaced these out 20 mil each and where obviously the lines met would be where I would be drilling the holes. I think I calculated around about 3,000 holes altogether. This table was 1,500 mil by 1,000 mil, so it was quite a big table, but I do want to print large in the future, so I thought I might as well just go as big as possible. Drilling was just very time consuming and just a lot of hard work, just constantly being on your knees and bending over i had a lot of back ache and a lot of knee ache i didn't have too many problems with the actual drilling of the holes i think i snapped about four or five of these drill bits that's it as you can imagine drilling this amount of holes created a lot of mess so just make sure that you do clear up as you go i used an old vacuum cleaner and it actually managed to suck up the shavings luckily enough so this felt like a lifetime but this took about two weeks on and off uh, letting my back rest and it was a very nice feeling peeling this protective layer back. I gave the sheet a quick sand down because there was a lot of little raised edges from the drilling, but it didn't take a lot of effort to get this nice and smooth. And this is what we was left with, a nice smooth table for printing. I wanted to give it a further polish just to make it even more smoother. So I got an orbital sander and I got a really fine, I think about 3000 grit sandpaper disc and I just gave it one last polish and a wipe. Now it was time to make the wooden frame. I was doing this all on a cheap so I just got some plywood and I just cut it the same size as the metal sheet and then also I got some 2x2 two two bits of wood and obviously cut them to the length to just make a very very simple box. I think if I was doing it again I probably would have bought slightly better wood because the wood was bowed and it resulted in me having to twist and distort it to try and get it all nice and flush and flat. To further secure the wood I also drilled holes in the plywood sheet and just screwed in some extra screws just to make it all nice and secure. Next I just gave the outside a quick coat of varnish. I'm going to do the inside as well in the next few steps but it's really important to make sure that you do seal everything because obviously you need this to be airtight. And next I put the sheet on top and I clamped it all down, got it perfectly where I wanted it to and then I would be marking my holes and this would be the hole that would go straight through the metal sheet to the underside of the base essentially fixing it all together. After I drilled the holes I then countersunk them because I wanted the metal surface to be just completely flat because I'm going to be moving large sheets of paper on and off it so I didn't really want anything just catching on it. I think my countersunk part was not very sharp and that's what caused maybe the different shapes that you can see. Uh, some holes I managed to get good but some just come out like a hexagonal I think it is maybe I needed to put a little bit more pressure on it or something like that but everything was flush so that's what it really mattered after countersinking them I just gave them one last sanding just to clear up any rough edges yeah, I wanted this as smooth as possible for the paper next we sealed all of the inside of the box so this is just some normal wood varnish and just coated all of the sides, made sure I got in all of the nooks and crannies and along the sides as well. And then after doing about three or four coats of this, letting it dry for about an hour or two in between coats, I then finally put on a silicone sealant around the edges. Don't be scared to apply a lot of this. I went quite heavy because I wanted to make sure I sealed up absolutely everything. Obviously, any air leaks is going to reduce the effectiveness of the table. 
because this was a large sheet of metal, it would mean that it would bow when I would put pressure on it to screen print. So I had to just quickly cut some spacers that I could use as support. So the gap between my holes was 20 mil, so I just went and cut a 17 mil wedge of wood from the same wood that I used to create the frame. So I knew it would be the same height. I kept it obviously smaller than 20 mil, so I wouldn't be hitting any of those holes, so I wouldn't be blocking them. The spacers did their job and they kept it nice and sturdy, but I did notice a slight convex in the metal sheet when I put a straight bar on it. I don't think this is going to cause too many problems. I did try and bend it the other way, but didn't have much luck, so that's as good as I'm going to get, I think. Then I drilled the hole for the vacuum hose and I just put this in the middle of the table. Next was fixing my clamps. So I just had a simple hinge clamp and I just decided to put two on the table and I just marked a fitting for my smallest frame. As long as the smallest frame can fit on it, then obviously the largest is going to be fine as well. If I'm dealing with really big frames and I have problems with it, I can put additional clamps into this table, but I think two should be enough. So now it was time to finally put the vacuum table onto the wooden frame. I just applied silicone sealant all around the edges and I just put a little bit of glue onto the supports. So after we put it down and put it in position, I put in the screws and made sure everything was bolted tight. And then I just left it with a weight on top just to make sure that all of the sealant would get a nice contact between the wood and the metal sheet. So to be extra careful, I did put some silicone sealant around the uh, the top part here and smudged it all, all in, you can see a little bit there. After that, I just let the silicone sealant set for 24 hours and then it was time to just attach the vacuum hose to the underside of the table. At the moment, I've just got it on some drawers. As you can see, I haven't actually got proper legs for it. I'm not too sure if I'm going to have this as a permanent table in my room or if it's something that maybe I can just put up against a wall when I'm not using it. So that's why I haven't really kind of bothered putting it on some sort of fixed legs at the moment. Uh, these crates actually do a pretty good job. It's just the same as a leg and it has the added benefit of also being some storage so I can keep all of my all of my inks and all of my paint and stuff like that underneath the table so maybe I'll keep it but I would like something a little bit higher as far as the actual table working it works really really well you can see here just a test of the suction this is just with a normal vacuum cleaner and it sucks really really well I'm not sure if I will be buying a proper air blower for it I'm not sure if it's really needed at the moment. I think this vacuum cleaner will suffice, but I'm just worried that it might burn out the motor. I'm not too sure if a vacuum cleaner can really be used for extended periods of time for something like this. So I need to do a bit more research. So that is where we're up to with the screen print table. I've also built an exposure unit and I'll be doing another video slash tutorial for that. But that's pretty much where I am now with the table. As I said, I haven't put it on legs or anything like that um, I'm still doing you know just test prints really and just kind of seeing how I can fit all of this into one room I've still got to buy a A1 printer I need to decide whether I'm going to be doing an all black system or just sticking with the normal printer inks and once I've got the printer I think I can actually go ahead and start producing some artwork and things like that which is going to be pretty cool so that's it for this build uh, if you've got any questions about the build then please feel free to ask put a put a comment below and i'll be sure to answer them for you and if you have got your own setup then please do show me i always love to see how other people have kind of tackled this problem especially when they are dealing with you know doing it in like a small space it's really interesting and also if anyone's come up with any clever ways on you know some sort of hinge mechanism to hold the screens up uh, that I'd like to see that I know a few you know do it with counterweights and things like that but yeah if anyone's got any other ways that they've done it then please feel free to share remember to like comment and subscribe and that's it for now